Hey, thanks for being here. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 201 is Shvetlana Shvetlana. Your host, Dan Katrasser. Dude, you got to tell me about this podcast and how it came into being, because, I mean, this to me is what modern day journalism is all about. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, yeah. I mean, this podcast came about because I stumbled upon the the um, illustrious life of Joseph Stalin's daughter, Svetlana Alieva, Um And I just never had even heard of her and suddenly found that she lived maybe the most incredible life that I had ever come across. You actually got to meet her? Because, I mean, to us, I mean, she's always been that 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 character that we read in headlines or in magazines. I did not get to meet her, okay. so I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, no, she died before uh, she died before I found out about her okay. story. But um, but in some ways, uh, you know, just as uh, a woman named Rosemary Sullivan, who wrote a great biography of her called Stalin's Daughter, said that she would never have written the book if she had met Svetlana. <laughs> and I kind of feel the same way. You know, it's like my love of trying to understand this person comes from trying to couple together all of the different wild chapters of her life from beyond the grave. So it's it's been a really incredible process. You know what's really interesting about what you just shared with us is the fact that I've always believed that that people who write stories or, or put things down in notes and things, they're speaking to a future generation. And so for you to be moved by this and to create the podcast is absolutely 100%, you know, when it comes to words. Words are not for necessarily are now, they're for everybody in the future. Yeah, well, you know, Margaret, uh, Margaret Atwood said, you know, in the end, we'll all become stories. <laughs> and what's and it's so true, you know, um, and then diving into her letters and her journals and and um, and her unpublished manuscripts, you know, she is she ends her last book saying that this book is for the granddaughters and the grandsons, See? that they'll be able to hear my story and and make human um, characters from history. And, you know, when you read something like that, it just, you feel like history is coming right out up from the page <laughs> and smacking you across the face. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> wow, to be in those journals though, Dan, I mean, it's 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 like, because I, I know I, I'm a daily writer, so I have 29 years of daily writing. When I go back to 1994, the scent of that paper, the ink, the paint that I put in there, I mean, what, what did you, uh, you know, when you were in those journals, what was it like? Well, the best part for me is seeing um, Svetlana was a voracious writer and she and she was writing a lot in English, which was not her first language. <laughs> so she, not only was she a writer, she was a rewriter. So it's great if you've ever seen one of her letters or her journals um, or her manuscripts is she, you know, as you can see the courier new font and you can see the typewritten <laughs> pages and then you see the underlines, exclamation points, <laughs> scribbles on the side of the page. I mean, it's just a mess. I mean, like, <laughs> is just its own sort of Rorschach, you know, test. And that's where it starts to feel alive. Yeah. Where you actually see the person um, who was the writer writing the words. And it's it's just incredible. Wow. I, I got to tell you, I love the length of each episode because you give me that right amount of space where I can, you know, take it all in, think about it create conversation and so I don't want I mean it's like I go to the next episode but you give me enough space where I don't get burned out by the episode yeah well that is uh, I will take the compliment but it's definitely shared between uh, me and my whole team of Allison Joy Adam Weber Catherine Isaac Joe Batsilowitz oh, wow. You know, so we have a whole group. We call ourselves the Spetlanites. Um, you know, we're, uh, you know, it is true. I will take the credit that I got obsessed first, but I definitely did not fall the hardest. And so, you know, we will, we've spent hours just, uh, you know, outlining, trying to craft, you know, what are the episodes of her life, um, which is also, you know, it's like crafting story out of life is it is its own editorial choice. So, you know, we hope that we're as honest as we can be about our perspective and what, what I'm bringing to the table, what we're bringing to the table. Um, you know, a lot of people in comments on the social media, some people love that I bring my own life yeah. story into it, yeah. some people don't. But I also think that that's the only way that I can be honest about this is someone's real life yeah. and I never met them and I am not objective. I am a storyteller myself. So there, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of craft that goes into it and I try and lift behind the curtain. 
I think that this is coming at such a perfect time because Russia is definitely back in the news again. And, and I, I bump into people all the time that talk about the former leaders. Stalin is, is definitely one of them. So to have this about Stalin's daughter, I mean, I can't imagine the culture shock to go from Russia to the United States. And the reason why I bring that up is because I see a lot of Ukrainians that are coming to the United States now that don't understand how Americans live. But they're, but they're getting I mean, like like the other day, someone from Ukraine discovered the lottery system. You should have seen their eyes. They won five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that is sort of how, you know, Svetlana felt. So, you know, when she comes over in, uh, you know, in 1968, she had grown up in capitalism. She was the princess of the Kremlin, but she, you know, wore gray and beige and lived in an apartment, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, and got whatever her allotment was. So when she arrives in America, she has a $1.5 million book deal, which yep. is like $50 yep. million dollars today. And she has no concept of money. Now, you know, that can go one of two ways. Some, but you can, you know, get a taste of capitalism and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to ride this all the way to the top. But for Svetlana, she was like, money? What is money? So she, <laughs> you know, she gives a couple hundred thousand dollars to start a, a hospital in India here. She gives, she pays off her new husband's debts there. Yeah. And, you know, it's, the um why some people will say that her life has this tragic end is that she ends penniless and in obscurity um but she never cared about money she didn't understand it she didn't she didn't enjoy it. She didn't want to be uh, uh, to live a ritzy life. And so in some ways, she also got what she wanted, which was to be out of the limelight and to have her own life. So it's complicated. And definitely her story of someone who's never fully in, uh, never fully capitalist, never fully communist, you know, it's complicated. And there's a lot of resonance today. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you a fascinating part of your of your podcast, and I and I really kind of chuckled like a child when when I came across it was that um, that she got married three weeks after landing on American soil. I laughed at it because three weeks after I got divorced, I got married again. But I've been married for thirty years, so I mean, I'm sitting there oh going, my "Oh my god!" god. <laughs> when you know, you know, <laughs> you do know, you do know. So so I'm anxious to find out you because you dug in deep with her journals and stuff. What what was that choice? I mean, three weeks and then she's married. Yeah. So, well, it actually was, um, it was, a, it was about a year that she lived in America um, on her own. So she had a little bit of that okay. buffer, but when the three weeks comes in is um, she was a big celebrity in, in America. She was the Soviet princess who defected and she got letters and telegrams and phone calls from people all over the country. One such person was very strange, very mystical woman <laughs> um, named Ivana Lazovich Hinzenberg Lloyd Wright. Wow. Uh, she was <laughs> the, uh, she was the widow of, famed architect Frank Lloyd Wright. Yep, yep. And she was still running his architect cult. A uh, cult, I shouldn't say cult. It was not a cult. It was a commune. Um, yes. uh, <laughs> um, out in Arizona. Um, and uh, and uh, Olga Vanna believed that Svetlana um, should come to her because Olga Vanna had had a daughter herself, a daughter named Svetlana, who had died tragically in a car wow. crash a couple decades earlier. And she believed that our Svetlana, Joseph, da Joseph Stalin's daughter Svetlana, was the reincarnation of her dead daughter Svetlana. So she brings her to, to the desert, to Scottsdale, to a world fashioned out of Frank Lloyd Wright architects. And it's there that she introduces her to Frank Lloyd Wright's number two, a man by the name of William Wesley Peters. And three weeks after she sets foot in Taliesin, um, she only planned to stay for a week, but three weeks later she marries William Wesley Peters, who in fact was the widow, the widower husband of the dead Svetlana. So Svetlana oh is God. now playing um, Svetlana Peters, um, who is, uh, so she is called Svet too in the Taliesin world. And, you know, um, so that whole story of running away from one sort of oppressive uh, universe and what Svetlana finds out when she's there um, is that she's really been lured there, maybe under false pretenses. She was certainly looking for a mother figure yeah. um, or looking for family. Um, and really they end up just draining her bank account, <laughs> um, which, uh, uh, which is what happens. But she does fall in love with uh, William Wesley Peters, um, even though they, uh, they do divorce, spoiler alert. Um, but for her, she has left 
her family. She's left her home. She um, is tasting American independence for the first time in, in her life. But it's also very chaotic. There's no school <laughs> center. And when she finds herself inside of this magical world where people are wearing tuxedos yeah. in the desert, making art nonstop <laughs> it's intoxicating so you know she globbed on to a tall hunk what can i say I, mean, um, I, I would do the same thing if i if i were in another country and i came to america i mean that, that i think that's that's such a, a new frontier for so many people in this country but i want to go back to the reincarnation because coming from russia reincarnation that i mean reincarnation to me is buddhism i mean is it was she into that by any chance that spiritual form so Svetlana um, was spiritual. You know, she uh, went through a lot of different churches. Um, okay. You know, okay. she says actually um, that the the person who first introduced her to the to the story of Jesus was a man by the name of Joseph Stalin, who no. thought he was a great man. Oh <laughs> so Stalin all but obliterated um, religion. Um, he also <laughs> had a spiritual side. Um, but Svetlana definitely, and she writes about it in her books that like, you know, that she was born with the spiritual center. Now, um, whether or not she believed in reincarnation, eh, that's not uh, that's not really Svetlana's bag, okay. but it is Olga Vanna's. So Olga Vanna, um, Lazovich, Hinzenberg, Lloyd Wright, was born in Montenegro um, and she, uh, in, in the turn of the century, um, and she, uh, always wanted, um, there was great tumult in in that area of the world. You know, we're talking the end of the czars, Russian revolution, yep, yep. you know, uh, you're an aristocrat one day, you're being, you know, <laughs> beheaded another day. Um, so she was always yearning for the power of immortality, for wow. that higher plane to live forever. And she found her uh, leader by the man, uh, by the name of Georgi Gurdjieff, who was an Armenian mystic, um, who yeah. believed that through the power of dance, um, wow. and, and through pain, real physical pain, you could um, elevate yourself. Um, Gurdjieff is a major mystical thinker uh, that many people study in their own right and uh, um, through all the things that he had studied. Um, but basically it's through Gurdjieff that Olga Vanna starts to get in touch with her inner mystic. Yeah. And, um, and so when she then moves to America um, and falls in love with this architect, Frank Lloyd Wright, it's like you have this famous <laughs> architect on one side and you have this mystic on another and they're going to change the oh world. <laughs> so that's, and so uh, she outlives Frank Lloyd Wright and then uses his fellowship, the world he called Taliesin, yeah. um, uses that fellowship in that community to uh, bring uh, her version of Gurdjieffian mysticism um, into practice. So now she, um, so she tells everybody, uh, she leads everybody. They have to make confession to her. Um, they, uh, they have to dance. You must dance. Yeah. Um, she tells them who they are allowed to sleep with, who they're allowed to marry. Wow. Um, she even uh, to uh, to limit the amount of children. She even. Um, forces men to have sex with each other, which for me would be fantastic. <laughs> um, but, um, but she really is um, quite controlling and demanding um, in all sorts, uh, in every aspect of people's lives in the Taliesin world. And wow. so that's the universe that our Svetlana unknowingly walks herself into. Um, Olga Vanna was always seeking somebody to uh, claim the spot of her deceased daughter Svetlana, and she hoped that with this new Svetlana, um, not only would she have her daughter back, yeah, but yeah. also Svetlana would come with some money because ah. of her <laughs> book and also notoriety. Because the only way that the Frank Lloyd Wright architects could get uh, customers was by having lavish parties in the desert. And, you know, wouldn't you go to a party in the desert if you learned that a dictator's daughter was hanging out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. So now be, this is one creative person to another here. If you could, would you go to Russia to record an episode? Oh, I, I definitely would. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Would. I mean, you know, I spoke to um, uh, uh, a reporter um, who was interested, who was a Russian um, who had just fled in the last year. So he's now working out of Latvia um, and he's going to move off to Amsterdam. And, um, you know, he was just being able to um, 
to be in touch with uh, with Russians right now, yeah. um, and and also Ukrainians as well, like um, is really such a privilege because. You know, I'm looking at this from the very comfortable, cushy lens of being an American, mm-hmm. the 21st century. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, my grandparent—I uh, had a grandparent who was an immigrant, but otherwise, like American, American, American—and um, that comfort and that like and that real idea of freedom. You know, like we throw the word freedom around a lot, but I don't think as Americans we really understand what it means <laughs> to not be able to speak your voice. Like somebody saying like, ooh, that joke hurts on Instagram. Yeah. That's not oppression. Like that is not. <laughs> like oppression is being locked up at, for the rest of your life. Navalny. Navalny yeah. is in solitary confinement. Um, like that is oppression. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, being in touch with what really is at stake um, in our world and seeing like real artists and thinkers um, who are who are as tormented as Svetlana was, you know, 50, 60 years ago, yeah. uh, that that would be incredible. And I, and I, you know, through the power of Internet and and, uh, and social media, you know, I do feel lucky that I can be in touch with them. But I would love to, you know, walk the walk that Svetlana did and. Wow. Um, and, and you know, and and there there are people who are still alive. So I've been uh, who are her friends. So I've been lucky over uh, you know over Zoom to you know to meet people who knew her and um, and I feel like you know going to Russia even more so. Absolutely, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, dude. I love your storytelling, and I know there's more than just this inside that creative mind. Oh, well, it has been such a pleasure, Arrow. The time flew by so fast. It Thank did. So it much. did. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too. You too. All right. See ya.